one of the main challenges that you might have when you're using AI agents on longer and larger tasks such as working on web applications might be the context limit of the underlying LM. So for example, at the start, you might see that the model is adding features nicely, adding dependencies, and everything is working properly. But after some time, you might observe that the model is starting to hallucinate, maybe even rewrite or even delete some of your files and introduce bugs, which uh, at the start it didn't. So if you want to solve this problem, Anthropic has introduced a solution that might work in some of those situations. In their blog post, Effective Harness for Long Running Agents, they're saying that even though that models are becoming better and better, we are observing to getting agents to make consistent progress across multiple context windows remains an open problem. And they say that the core challenge of long running agents is that they must work in discrete sessions and each new session begins with new memory of what came before. So if you stop your agent after some time and you try to essentially resume the work from there, you don't have a checkpoint from which the agent knows how to continue. They have implemented a agent solution in their quote agent SDK which is a somewhat general solution. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement this solution even with using QN3 and Olama and Langchain. So what they did was to create uh, two agents, essentially split the problem in two parts, create an initializer agent that set up the environment on the first run. And this agent is also going to be able to create a feature list that it is going to be implemented by the another agent called coding agent. The coding agent job is to do the actual implementations of the features and uh, of course write some unit tests, make git commits, etc. And this will be used as artifacts to say that this project is actually going to be progressing and which of the features are actually already done. So in this way, we're going to be creating these checkpoints that the coding agent can now continue from. In their post, they also describe what is the structure of a single feature in the feature list created by the initializer agent. And then you can see that we have the category, the description, the steps that are needed to implement this feature and whether or not this feature is actually passing or not. So if this feature is actually implemented already. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to Amex Pro. There you're going to find a complete AI engineering academy that starts from understanding what and how you can set up your environment, what are the foundations of AI and machine learning such as Python, classical machine learning model statistics and PyTorch. And from there, you're going to be learning how you can deploy your own machine learning models in production and how you can train them. From there, you're going to learn all about generative AI and LMs, how you can create your own RACs, CACs and AI agent systems, and of course, how you can deploy those into production. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to Amexpert Pro. Thank you. The idea presented by Anthropic is not limited to any LOM, so I have decided to take it and implement it using Langchain, Quintry, Owama, and Pedantic. So what I have done is to create a very simple project that uses two different agents presented in their work, the initializer agent, which is going to be the architect, and they ha uh, have created this very simple agent environment. In this one, we're going to be able to have a feature list, JSON, which we will use the feature a structure that you've seen in their blog post. Then you have the Git history, which will be also a context for the checkpoints. And we have a list of code files that pretty much are going to be containing the information from the different agents. From there, you're going to see that we have the coding agent, which is going to be using the agent environment as checkpoints and work on the features, writing some tests, since I want this to be the verifications of whether or not each particular feature is actually being done. 
And then if the tests are failing, we're going to again continue with the coding agents. Otherwise we have a success and then we're going to be doing a commit and updating of the feature list JSON. I'm in my local cursor instance and these are the only dependencies that we're going to be using, Langchain 1.1, the adapter for OAMA and the latest version of the Pedantic library. So we have just a single file in this particular application and this file contains the agents themselves along with the features that are going to be implemented in order to run the application. The first thing that I'm doing here is to specify the model that I'm going to be using along with a working directory. This is the actual directory within which the agents are going to be working in. Then I have initialized the AOM. In my case, this is going to be the Quen3 8 billion parameter model. And again, I'm using OAMA as the model provider. You can also enable reasoning if you want to. And then I have a couple of pedantic classes, which are going to be the structured outputs that Langchain is going to provide for us. This will be the features, the project state, and the coding action that needs to be done in order to continue. Then I have a data class for shelled result. This is going to be essentially the output that I'm going to get from the shell once a command is going to be executed. And from there, you can see that I have the agent environment. This will have a run shell uh, command, which essentially is going to tell our agents to run whatever they want as a command. Note that this is pretty terrible if you're running it on a machine that has some important information. So make sure that you're doing this very safely in a sandbox. Other than that, I have a write file, read file, list files, git commit uh, method and function right here, and then get context. So this will actually give us the checkpoint that we want for when we are going to be resuming the coding agent. And from there, you can see that I have the Python path, the existing files, feature status, and the git history for the last five commits. As you can see that I'm getting those with git walk. So from there, you're going to see that I have the first agent, which is going to be again, the initializer agent. And this will take a request, which is going to be the user input. I have a very simple prompt that is very similar to what we had within the Anthropic blog post. And here you can see that we have an example of features and the tests that are need to be done in order to make sure that those features are actually going to be implemented. Of course, this is somewhat simplistic, but in our case, it appears to be working quite well. And I'm going to be initializing the model with the prompt and the structured output of the model state and the project state. Then I'm going to be giving the user input as a request uh, here within this particular prompt. Then I'm going to be writing the project plan. These are going to be the features that our model is going to be running the agent progress uh, and then getting it and uh, actually committing the initial version of this particular project state. After that, we're going to be listing the features that are being created from this model. And then we have the run coding session. So this will be the second agent, which is going to be essentially the worker agent. And the first job of this agent is to actually check the features list create them and get the JSON from that. And if we don't have any more features that need passing, we will know that actually the project has been completed. After that, we're going to be start and working with a maximum attempts that are going to be uh, provided right here for the agent. So we have a somewhat a very simple retry logic right here. And here uh, we're going to be uh, again using another prompt this one is going to be for the worker agent. Uh, I have specified here that this is actually a Python developer. So uh, if you're working in another language, of course, you might need to change that. Then uh, you're going to see the rules, implementation file, test file, test must be runnable and keep code simple and correct. Of course, you might do a lot more with some prompt engineering here, but I just wanted to test out the idea. And here you can see that I'm passing in the context, the feature name, the feature description, etc. everything that the agent is currently working on. 
And the main point right here is that the context is being given by this get context, which is taken from the environment. So when we run this, we don't store the complete conversation and the agent hands off, etc. We are only using this checkpoint as the context that is going to be given to the coding agent. After this is done, we're going to be writing the file names that this agent have created. And after that, uh, probably running the test command that is going to be verifying that this result has been executed. And if this is success, we're going to be uh, actually changing the features list and we're going to be passing this particular feature as a uh, complete and we're going to be continuing with the next one. To run this application, we will initialize the agent environment with the working directory. I'm going to be removing the older directory and creating it in a new one. And from there, we'll have this user request create Python functions for Fibonacci and Factorio include unit tests. So of course, you can change this and try to run it with something else. Then I'm going to be manually running the initializer agent and from there, I'm going to be giving just three iterations over the coding session agent. Note that this one doesn't know anything about the initializer agent. Again, we are not passing in the message history. And after that, I'm going to be loading the features list and checking how many of the features are actually being passed and how many of those aren't. Let's run the application. So you can see that the initializer agent is being called first. This will create the features along with the feature hints that it is going to give the steps of the implementation. And then it is given to the coding agent to implement the factorial function along with the test factorial. As you can see, it did that, it implemented it, and even the tests are now passing it is getting the help from the feature list. And then it goes to the Fibonacci and the test Fibonacci files. Here you can see that also it got uh, pretty much all of the tests passing. And now that this is being complete, you can see that both of the features are being marked as complete. If I go back to the project, you can see that we now have this directory agent workspace and in here, you're going to see that we have the features list along with the name, the description, and the implementation hints that uh, are given by the initializer agent. And both of those are now actually being passed. And for example, let's go to the factorial function. You can see here the implementation, pretty simple. And uh, one additional thing here is that this is not a recursive function, which is great. And for this particular one, we have also the test factorial. The agent has uh, chosen the unit test library and it has added a couple of tests in order to run through this and mark that this feature is being complete. So it seems like that the good old divide and conquer is still very relevant in the age of AI agents and LMs. So the approach here is to split the problem into two different agents. We have the initializer agent, and then we have the coding agent, which is actually the worker itself. And it seems like that the checkpoint of using some Git information and a specific JSON file, at least for these simple tasks, uh, seems to be working. Of course, Anthropic are mentioning that this is working on a much larger scale. And if you want to try it out, please let me know down into the comments below. I will upload and open source the code for this particular experiment. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of this video. And if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro to get access to the complete AI Engineering Academy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.